Yeah. Bring it in with a yawn. Let's quick warm up. Bring it. Start it off with a yawn and a. What are you drinking? It is. It is, Rheinbacher. Which is a, okay. Which is a a, a premium a zero alcohol beer, because I decided, um, not to drink this month, and it was probably for the best. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, why would it be for the best? Because uh, of the fucking dog situation. Yeah, you, were st- you st- the dog was drinking too much. Yeah, yeah. No, like, yeah. <laughs> no. I well, it was, it was, it was. Um, t- the drinking thing was was t- sort of to coincide with the start of lockdown. I noticed like a trend in my in in my drinking during the last lockdown that it just crept up and up and up. And I was never really like a heavy drinker anyway. And I suddenly realised I was like, you going through like, you you you're having a bottle of wine every couple of days. Like that's not, that's not you. If that makes sense, <laughs> like that's that's weird. I, I've become someone else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I just so Fair I just one. I was just we're like, just well, well, lockdowns a month. Everyone's just done sober October and whatever. So I'm just gonna buck the trend and do sober November on my own. Um, right, you're doing it the hipster way of like, well, you know, yeah. The Everyone real else is growing guys. a mustache, and I'm like, well, I've already got one of those. Yeah, so we're back. We're back. Sorry. Um, yeah, uh, you were uh, alcoholic, drinking too much. Yeah, Go. yeah. Well, everyone else takes seems to take November to grow a mustache, and I, I've already got one, so. I'll do last month's thing. Have have you? Have we? Is, is the, that, well, is the moustache counts? is the moustache like a singular style, or is it just part of the beard? Because you could have a beard. So you could say someone's got a beard but no moustache, right? I don't know. I don't think so. Like if someone shaved their top lip but kept the rest. Yeah, I'm not sure whether that'd be a beard. It'd be a twat. <laughs> It'd be a twat. That's all that would be. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no. We're excluded from uh, Mustache November or whatever it's called. No, Mo, Mo, Suicide Man November, Movember, and some twats started calling it. Oh, yeah. No Shave November, which is just life, right. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he stops and shaving his eyebrows. He is. Yeah. Have you have you gone to barbers within the last couple within the last year? No, no, I n- I've never done it. I've been encouraged to go to like a Turkish barber or something. They're like, oh, he'll give you a nice shave and, like, and all that. But I've never done it. Uh, yeah, one of the things they started doing recently is shaving your eyebrows, which I've always found odd. It's like a service. I do like a trim. So they cut you. But like, I don't, I don't go to someone to I've do never that done for it. me. I've never done, yeah, eyebrow styling but uh yeah when with like a uh, shave on top and then a trim on the beard and they were like oh yeah we'll do your eyes as well <laughs> shave right, your eyes fair enough <laughs> <laughs> no more eyes for you yeah um yeah and so yeah so yeah have you have you found it any different i've i've, I've as always it's never really made the difference to what, me of the, of the not like, drinking i can drink thing. a lot and then stop drinking and the same same with smoking i can smoke a lot and then not smoke yeah no i seem to be no, quite dead inside um, how did you feel <laughs> No, like I, I, I haven't, I haven't really noticed a difference because I, I kind of toned it down in October anyway. So this month I was just like, I'm just not gonna. Oh, so you were doing it with the cool kids as well. No, nah, I did. Oh, sorry, the not cool no, I wasn't, kids. I wasn't, I wasn't not drinking. Just I just hadn't. I, ju- I just, I just, I just, just weren't. I had naturally enough. slowed. I'd entered like a hibernation Natch. period, as far as my alcohol right, naturally goes. Naturally, yeah. um, fair enough. But um, yeah, no, I got the first one tonight because. Because uh, because Vic's had a had a bottle of red and she doesn't normally have red and red's what I drink, so right yeah. Why did she get a bottle of red? If she doesn't drink red. No no no. She like if she's drinking if she's just drinking on her own because I don't drink white. She'll buy herself white. Right. But she just oh so she bought you red wine knowing that you'd stop drinking. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Fair enough. <laughs> no no. She just decided she wanted red. But and uh, that tonight, yeah. So tonight was the first where I was like, "Yeah, I could do with that." But it's fine. It's fine. Fair enough. Good. I'm on top of it. Yeah, fair enough. It's not a problem. 
<laughs> What's all of it? It's only one. one. One doesn't count. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't see any benefit to drinking booze apart from when you're self annihilating. It's a social thing. I haven't. I don't. I don't drink alone with your wife. Yeah. You socialize with your wife. You loser. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 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 let's discuss the topics of the day, shall we? What? No, wife. <laughs> Who do you socialise with? No, but I slept with my... With, I socialise with a dog, Steve. <laughs> I've got my priorities straight. Well, I tried that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, it's such a weird... Such, like, I know you're, it's a whole thing for you, yeah. but more importantly, it's a kind of a thing for me. Because it's kind of like, well, I don't know whether to congratulate you or condemn you or I don't know. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, um, so for those um, who are just tuning in, yeah. uh, last week, uh, Steve was trialing a dog uh, for a couple of days. Um, so we're about to get the results in. Um, sounds <laughs> yeah. naked. Sounds like uh, the dog has not returned. Dog has dog, dog has set sail. Um, yeah. So we had, the, we, we had it, was, it was an awesome couple of days, but there was one like half hour incident. Um, which was, which wasn't like major. It's just, um, I don't know. It was, a, sorry, just the, 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 my, my horrible sense of humor. That's all I'll keep to myself. <laughs> it was, it was, it was a red flag sort of situation. And it was one of those things where I was just like, if it was me on my own, I would a hundred percent have this dog. Because even if I couldn't fix that issue with training or something, I'm strong enough to muscle it out the way and get it into a crate or whatever I have to do. But like, I can't invite chaos into into our house where my wife lives as well. Like, well, I used to go around once a week. <laughs> Bit <of> chaos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and all it, what it. But yeah, it's a it's a weird uh, yeah what situation. It, like I say, especially a couple getting a dog. Yeah, it's a different scenario. Yeah, than what I'm yeah. accustomed to. Uh, it was it was basic. It was the annoying thing is is it was basically the dog getting overexcited, but it was to such a degree that he was he just marauded around the whole house and. And I, I tried to talk to people about it and their their whole response was like, Well, all dogs get excited. I was like, mm-hmm. ah, I'm 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 saying this is to you as someone who understands dogs. Like, I'm not mm-hmm. like a complete newbie at this. I'm telling you it was a problem. Like, it wasn't just mm-hmm. like, oh, he's barking at the door. I don't like it when they bark at the door. Like it wasn't like it wasn't like that. Um, it was there was there was an element of danger to it, and even though I was like I'm ninety five percent sure, and others are ninety five percent sure that this is this is trainable and fixable and whatever. If that five percent is the is the one that sticks, then that's a ten year commitment to chaos that I can handle, but that my wife can't, and I can't. Mm. I just can't do that. It was it was horrible because we were both like he's such. He's, he was such a lovely dog. Uh, I every, everything else, every single other thing about him was amazing. Ninety five percent perfect, but that five percent was an absolute killer, and it was fucking heartbreaking. Well, the most diplomatic way, or the, maybe like the the proper way to describe it is, obviously the dog didn't feel like it was your, it was a good fit for you and Vix. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, it could be because of a number of different reasons, but that's the core thing is that it didn't feel like this is the we are the we are right for the dog and the dog is right for us. Well, the the other thing was you could is deconstruct that it more. He, he was he 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 was um before he came to us he was he was with a fosterer. Um and while we were making a decision, um we heard that there were another couple who were really keen on him. I was like, "Well, if he's going to bounce around foster homes or something, like we were both like, we'll have him. But if he's got somewhere else to go, then it, it it's it's more of a sensible decision for us to say, just let them let them have him. Like I, mm. w- we wouldn't have let him go into like a pound or like go go to from just house to house looking for somewhere to 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 be permanently. But because there was another option for him, we decided to let him go. Basically, but yeah, if, as long as it, if it wasn't the right fit, then it yeah. wasn't the right fit at the end of the day. Like, uh, yeah, can still keep looking. Um, it yeah. Would, but yeah, it's going to be different for everybody. Yeah, but 
Yeah. But it was, so it was like... Kind of, uh, sad news in that it didn't work out, but yeah. good news that you didn't take on the I mean, it's... What day is it now? It's, that wouldn't have worked. It's Thursday now, and it uh, was... Thursday. It was Sunday night when he went back, I think. And, like, it was, it was only sort of yesterday that I started to kind of come to terms with it and feel all right with it. Like, it's weird. It was t- we were with this dog for, like, two days, and that's it. It's amazing how quickly you get, like, attached and, like... It, it, it's just it was, it was such a strange experience I, I wasn't expecting it to, well, be that, a, to be that strong it's a version of paternal feelings isn't it yeah a version of it yeah where it's like now nah, yeah you want to look after and rescue this this dog needed rescuing yeah. so like there's also that aspect of like yeah I really want to help out yeah it wasn't like a lamp lampstone <laughs> rescue <laughs> plugged into the wall yeah they're fine you know what I mean but yeah so gonna keep on I, keep- I do find the looking after like uh, the try you putting it on trial kind of like a strange thing i know like it makes sense but it does seem strange to as you say like the dog needs time to get used to its surroundings and Mm. if it's nervous or un, it doesn't feel like it's safe it's going to act out yeah so it's like a kind of riddled with a little bit of problems but i think that's inescapable when it comes to rescue dogs isn't it and like even even then like we we have said to him like look we it's 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 a no but if it doesn't work out and he st- and he just ends up in other places or starts getting bounced around, give us a call because we'll have him. But it's it was just it was just one of those it was it, uh, it was it was just a weird. A so weird like thing. a peer pressure. Th- so you would take it if it was pres- not pressured, but um, you would sacrifice your marriage for this dog. <laughs> it, that was it was a that was it, it, that was basically a joint decision. Because in that instance, we would bet on the ninety-five percent, like yeah, um, that even if we can't one hundred percent fix this issue, we can at least tone it down. And then I think yeah, anything I would say is I think it would naturally tone down quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. I and I said that was home. another thing. I think stability would have yeah. would have helped a hell of a lot. Um, yeah, but it's it's just it was it was just one of those one of those things. I was like. I, I've kind of got to make a choice here. Like it's yeah. fair enough for me to be like, I'm I'm more than happy to walk down a dark alley. Like I'm safe. I'm not going to send my wife down a dark alley. That's a different thing. Like it's yeah, it's weird. I've tried to avoid that as much as possible yeah. for some reason. Like with it, the, because there's there's there's, I think, um, I don't. I've been trying to figure out what the terminology is for my descriptor but like I, I've always people have always people I've dated have always wanted me to look after them mm. and I can do that but I need more out of life than just somebody I'm not this isn't what you're doing but mm. this is my experience of like I need more out of life than just looking after somebody so I kind of made the decision that well if the if my wife or my girlfriend can't look after herself then she's she deserves to die <laughs> so like you know it's like so it's kind of like yeah it's like it's say it's like i don't know money joint money or something it's like well each person should have their own money and we yeah. should invest jointly but i'm not gonna look out yeah that's it's a weird yeah. I, don't, I don't want to have the parental no role i i like in, to uh, be in a, a situation so yeah, i push though i push my wife down a down a well <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm saying i i I'm, and i'd expect her to push me down a well as well i'm i'm blessed to be in a situation yeah. where my help and protection and whatever is more offered than it is asked for like it's it's not yeah. it's not something that's um i mean maybe it is it yeah. maybe maybe it is expected of me societally but it's not expected of me in the relationship no but it is uh, what i was picking up on is that you were that was kind of your default stance is yeah if it's going to put my partner in danger then it's a no even no. potentially even remotely yeah yeah well heartbreak I mean, well, she's already probably peaked at her heartbreak when she realised she was trapped with you for the rest of her life. Yeah, Something yeah, yeah. Like so, she, so like, she was really fine, just dead more. inside at this point. So it's 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 all yeah, good. At this point, <laughs> I hate it. I don't know why yeah. I hate that phrase. I've just heard so many people say "at this point," oh, right. and it always feels it always makes me enraged. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. So, at what point? You, you, you dot to dots. What are you doing? This uh, now? You you mean now, that's, right? That's a, yeah, fine. It's an odd trigger. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, this is uh, episode two one five. Welcome. We're on YouTube. If you're just listening and you want to see our faces, pop on YouTube. We're on social media: Pulling Teeth Pod on Twitter and Instagram, Pulling Teeth Podcast on Facebook. We've got an Amazon banner on the website: PullingTeethPodcast.com in the top right. If you fancy helping us out, um, and that's the intro done. Oh, um, 
Yeah, I was meant to talk about something last week. I sent you a video, uh, mm. but I forgot about it because yeah. I was expecting you to start grieving for the dog that did that. You know, that, that couldn't tag on to the end of the episode because it was like all about the dogs. Yeah. So it's your fault. Yeah, yeah my fault. Um, but yeah, we got a. Uh, I got an email from to the Pulling Teeth Podcast uh, email account. Hey, hey, hey. And um, yeah, I'm not sure how to respond to it. It was a video. It's like. I, th- I thought it was an automated email because we don't have a huge audience. Yeah. So it's like, uh, yeah, it was someone wanting to come on and be interviewed for a film that they made. Okay. And it's kind of a bit torn because like, hey, I'm all for promoting and helping, encouraging people to make video. But a lot of the video made me angry. Yeah. As a short made you like, it was kind of like. I mean. Yeah. It's a stu- if it was a student film, a university film, I think it would fit that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so like it was just it just felt weird that I well, think if we were to interview him, we we would just be quite critical and mean. Yeah, I mean, like, I said to I don't you feel bef- well, after you'd sent it to me, like and it just yeah. wasn't obviously like on air. Did we say on air? We weren't. When we weren't recording. No. Um, yeah. Like is I I said is this a, is this meant to be good, and is this yeah. person a listener? Because I don't want to upset them. Or whatever, yeah, whatever I said along those lines. So it's, it's, it's a it's a weird one, isn't it? Because I think there's we want to encourage people making film and making anything creative, mm. and we want to be give good feedback because I think we could give good feedback. Yeah. In terms of we would do it differently. This is how we would do it. Have you considered doing it the way that we do it, which is better? Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> it's not that we do it better. It's just that yeah, we kind of have a very much a way of. I think we've got quite similar tastes in how things would be done well, there are, or how stories would be told or yeah, themes and stuff. There were a couple of things wrong with it. Um, like right off the bat, the, it had nothing nothing really to do with like the quality of the writing or anything like that. But it's the fact that this movie has been made a thousand times. Are you doing anything differently? And if you look at the yeah. trailer, no, you're not. And the film, not to you know shout it out too badly, but the film is basically Freaky Friday, mm. which is just two people swap bodies. One's a guy who's a slob. One's a woman who has a professional career. Yeah. And the antics and the confusion and the laughter that follows. Mm. But it looks... It's all good. It's, it's good. If you made it and it's your passion project yeah. and you love it. The oh, fucking awesome. irritating yeah, thing it. about it was it looked well produced. Yeah. Cam- camera quality was good. Audio quality was good. Yeah. I mean, that yeah, it was just, I think it was just, if you're going to make Freaky Friday, you really do have to make it different. Yeah. Same way that if you're going to make a zombie film, you have to do it different. Just, like, Shaun of the Dead was a zombie film, but there was loads more going on. just a lot of people working really hard to make a film that's already been made. Yeah. But yeah, it was like, uh, oh, you know, it was, it was interesting because it was our first official written in request for an interview. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> not sure whether we no, would do interviews And we'll shit on you, Phil, <laughs> privately. <laughs> <laughs> well there's been other potential interview people we would interview but and we tried it a little bit but i'm not sure whether this is really the format for interviews i guess like i think i said a while back it's, it'd probably be like a separate thing to do independently mm. and link into the show kind of thing rather than like here's the news and by the way here's oliver north yeah well, i can't i don't think we can get oliver north i don't think we can get him i think he's dead it was a weird quandary for me because it was like yeah it's like i want to encourage i'm very much a supportive person even though i try not to be or, or appear to be but like if someone's got something that they need doing i'm very much of right let's go let's ha- what can i do to help you get this done yeah um but it's like yeah with that it was just like i th- i I think we would. I think, like me going on a ghost hunt, I think I would just ruin the mood. <laughs> like it would be Nick's ghost hunt, and everyone else would be like, "Why are we here?" <laughs> so, yeah. So you know, good. Cause it's nice to be in contact with a podcast audience. That's like, hey, we're now officially people. So a podcast has been requested to be people to appear on. So that's good. Yeah. Other non-news stuff. Have you seen the Chicago Seven yet? No, it's on my watch on list. Netflix. It looked. It looked pretty good. I watched it today and it was really weird. Okay. Like it's funny. It's as a film it's it's, it's good and it's funny, but it's like incredibly politically leaning. Yeah. Which is always quite strange to me. So like um there's like 
And like the things that we ridicule people for being too political about, yeah. they fully embody in lots of situations. Okay. And it's just like, oh, it seems a bit, but it's still funny and it's still good. Um, and But there was one part where it's like, I, I don't know whether I just find this hilarious out of how ridiculous it is because I'm assuming that this would be real. So there's a protest, there's a woman holding an American flag. And then the narrator goes, and then the you know conservatives showed up and there was like three... 18 you know posh kids going put down the flag put down the flag and maybe a sandwich maybe a sandwich you <laughs> bitch <laughs> <laughs> and the woman's like holding the flag like mm, i'm standing up for what i believe in and then they rip her down okay. and rape her and everyone's oh. like well this is awkward Christ. have i lost you again no i can this is can you hear me i think yeah there I'm we back go. now there we go did you get the make me a sandwich and then they're gonna rape them yeah i did <laughs> yeah yeah so just there's just something so hilarious about someone being so angry that they want a sandwich and screaming it at somebody but as though that's a real and being person. treated something real well this is the thing right i i my assumption is it's not a real person but it, it could well be i don't know everybody maybe it was somebody who was just who turned up and just wanted to hate this woman and decided to push all their buttons 100%, and then rip but, her down and rape her in a field. But in that context, that person isn't playing a person. That person is representing all conservatives. Well, it's just a caricature, isn't it? Yeah. In terms of a film, it's the, I can't believe, I can't relate to this person on any level to the point where it's beyond human belief. So you go like, this person is obviously caricatured. Mm. So I can't, empathize or dis or hate this person because he's not real he's obviously not relatable in any way but it could very well have happened yeah but yeah there's lots of uh there's lots of facebook post type dialogue in lots of different Excellent. points and it's just like this is just weird it was really weird for me to watch but i find it's not just because it's a left thing they you know it's the it, anything political i just go like why are you trying to preach to me about your jehovah's witness political belief yeah i don't care why are you knocking on my door all of a sudden <laughs> just tell the story about what they believe and, and how to do it not just like not trying to make a political statement yeah but it was all right it was, it was still a good film it's still funny it was still uh you know had strong worth, points still worth it. watching but yeah yeah, still worth yeah. watching. It was just it was just strange to be like there were so many moments I was like, well this is this is just Facebook. I'm watching Facebook the film at different points. That was a bit weird. Oh, and lastly from yeah, the intro. <laughs> uh episode two fourteen is currently late because it only had your neck. What? So yeah, like <laughs> I edited it, I exported it, and when I went up to publish it, your head had moved up <laughs> on the right hand side of the screen. <laughs> so it was me talking to your neck. <laughs> I have no idea what happened, but as I was publishing it to YouTube, I was like, it's a lot of neck. I don't remember there being that much neck. So I'm, I'm re-exporting uh, it now. So it's, uh, it's coming up. It'll be up in a minute after this. Okay. But yeah, I was like, onto I, the news. I was pretty sure I'd recorded more than, more than my neck. <laughs> more than neck. Yeah, well, as I was editing it, you were fine. And then it was just when I exported it, I looked at neck. the video. I was like, oh, this is... <laughs> yeah. He's really putting his neck out or something. Mm. I don't know. Anyway, into the news. Oh, I regret that immediately. Yep. Staffordshire man has built a World War One trench in his garden. He's dug a hole. Oh. <laughs> He's dug a, a, a long rectangular hole. He dug hole. a ditch. Dug a long uh, ditch. With sandbags. A man... <laughs> He's got a suicide corner. A man has dug a ditch. News. Yeah. Suicide corner. Sandbags. Yeah. It's good. Barbed wire. Former soldier explosions. Adam Biggs. <laughs> Death. Yeah. Sadness. Poetry, football. Bunkers. Uh, his Burton home, as he says he wants to provide passers-by with an interactive way of experiencing what it would have been really like on the front line fighting in the trenches. Falling in a ditch. Well, that, that was a common occurrence. That was a common occurrence. You'd be in your trench and then that guy from the semi-detached house over the road <laughs> would walk past. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I die for Yeah. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> Carry on. Do you, do you need any biscuits? Yeah, I'll have a biscuit if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. The father of two, who spent seven years in the 3rd Battalion Mercian Regiment, has decked out his drive with sandbags to imitate the horrifying trenches, along with a mannequin shielding from gunfire. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Authenticity, that's all the way. The soldier is surrounded by Union flags hanging from the fences of his front garden, along with poppies and even barbed wire. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't know it was legal to deck your front garden with barbed wire. Um, now that I know that it is, the possibilities are endless. <laughs> yeah, I think stuff like that is... You have to be careful, don't you? Because, like, wasn't there a, all that mm. stuff, like, 
where if someone breaks into your property and get gets hurt, they can technically sue you. There was it. There was it. Wasn't there a guy that fell yeah, through a burglar fell through a roof? Yeah, and he and he got yeah. he fell on like a knife or something. Yeah, it was something like that. Yeah, was that from liar liar? <laughs> It was in Liar Liar, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I've heard of similar things in multiple pop, pop references. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. I haven't fact fact checked it. The, but there was that farmer yeah, that it's got not inconceivable. There was a farmer that got done for murder years ago for shooting a guy that broke into his house. Yeah. Um, and everyone was like, "Why?" But it's because in in the UK the gun laws are that's how that's how it is. You're not allowed to shoot I people. Guess it's just got to be reasonable, hasn't it? Like, if somebody breaks into your house, I don't think you can smash all their teeth out. No. But you can render them unconscious. Yes. Like, there's a weird spectrum of, like, that's too far. Yeah. Which I'm... That's the reason no, I'm going to you can't go I've, full I was watching brick. Pulp Fiction and, like, tie them yeah. up. Yeah, there's a weird line, and I just think that I'm, I'm, I go right up to the line immediately yeah. when in any kind of situation like that. So that's, what, that's why I'm single and going to prison, eventually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, the, if you could put barbed wire on your front lawn, it's maybe good. you could put landmines. I mean, there were landmines in No Man's Land. He's just built an amazing way to catch the milkman. <laughs> and solve the stray cat problem. Yeah. Well, yeah. all the stray cats are caught up in my razor wire. All in one. razor wire now. <laughs> yeah. All in one ditch. <laughs> yeah. Um, elsewhere in the world, before we get back to lots more Stoke, uh, Pittsburgh toilets are now being detonated. Why? Uh, terrorism. So, uh, police in Pittsburgh are, investiga- are investigating a spate of explosions at portable toilets in the area. Two toilets have been attacked <laughs> in the past week. Is it just fireworks? The most recent being on Tuesday. Is it just fireworks? Sorry? Is it just fireworks? I don't think so. I think it's like explosives. <laughs> but well, what are fireworks, I guess, right? Yeah. Police said the explosion happened overnight classic time when non-idiots use fireworks and a construction worker arrived at work to find the toilet destroyed that raises a little bit of questioning i think if you're a construction worker and you turn up to a portable toilet and you destroy it mm. you could just blame it on terrorism yeah i think they believe that that'd be fine when police arrived at the scene later in the morning they found evidence of an explosive device had gone off and I feel like that means it's not fireworks, doesn't it? It feels like they would say it looks like it was fireworks. Mm. They said, no, explosive device. It's too big a word, I think. Last week, another blown-up toilet was found in Lawrenceville, where a 4 a.m. explosion sent pieces of the toilet into the pavement in front of a nearby house. Onto the pavement. <laughs> so the debris of a portable toilet just rained down <laughs> upon this house. <laughs> Police are trying to decide whether the attacks are linked. Maybe we've got a serial portaloo detonator on our hands. This is how, that's how they begin, like, how they learn. It's like a trinity thing. And, uh, yeah, very specific. Get in the bath, <laughs> kill yourself, and then I'm going to blow up your toilet. <laughs> Why are you going to blow up my toilet? Shut up. It's, it's just, it's my this thing. This is how I got started in this business. Yeah. Yeah, it's my, with a sticky bandit. With band- a sticky bandit. <laughs> <laughs> Elsewhere in Stoke, um, I... <laughs> Right, I, I I need to come up with a term for this because lots of things like the election in America and lots... Of, I see the world as a very ridiculous place not to be taken seriously. Yeah. And when there's evidence of more ridiculousness, it seems clearer to me, but other people seem to see it as more serious now. Yeah. Like, oh, oh you know, dead people are voting in America. Yeah. Oh, well, that that's because of blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Like, no. The dead yeah. are voting in America. <laughs> Why are you taking this seriously? Yeah. Well, it's because of the really intelligent super conspiracies. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that's serious to you, is it? Donald Trump okay. is suing a state. He's <laughs> suing the state of Pennsylvania. Yeah. I, I just, like, I, 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 it, it goes, it boggles my mind how people can hear that and become more invested. Yeah. Because my my instinctive reaction is like this is nonsense. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> so like uh, so the reason I bring up that example is that uh, I see more and more news articles like paramedics who find people with signs of life and declaring them dead. Yeah. It's just like this is nonsense. How can this be real? So th- this is uh, 
written in all seriousness, but it also feels like it's going to be uh, an interesting sketch kind of thing, right? A couple whose children died in a devastating house fire had previously been warned not to smoke in bed. Don't smoke in bed. Your children have been ravaged by fire. <laughs> Siblings, Riley Holt, aged eight, six-year-old Keegan Unit, Tilly Unit, aged four, and three-year-old Ollie Unit were killed in the blaze. Their youngest brother survived because he was sleeping in his parents' bedroom at the time. Bearing in mind the parents' bedroom where the fire began. Were they he okay? Was fine. The parents were fine. Oh, act- no, sorry, that's just now made sense. So I'll go into it a little bit more. An inquest heard today how the fire started after Natalie Unit and Christopher Moulton had been smoking in bed. One of the cigarettes is thought to have ignited the bedding. Right. Now, I think if you were stone, if you were of all of your, uh, what do they call it? You know, you're intact completely. You're conscious. You're fully, con- you're fully focused. I think you should be able to deal with a duvet fire. Yeah. Right. It feels like maybe there was at the end of the night they were knackered they were inebriated mm. and a cigarette more you know falls out your mouth and ignites something maybe that's what was happening but i don't think they're going to too much details how about that it caused i don't understand yeah, how they're all fine and people in the other room died right so yeah th- that's what just clicked for me so the the short answer is they were able to get the baby in their room out the house but they weren't able to get to the other rooms right so that's why they survived is because they couldn't get to the bed the children's bedrooms. Christ. Because of because their duvet was on fire. <laughs> it's another one of those your life's over kind of things, isn't it? It's yeah, for sure. Like Well, the and you still got the one like, kid. Uh, but what if he's not the best one? <laughs> your twenty percent of the bloodline's intact. Yeah. Just keep going. No, yeah. your life's over, isn't it? Um uh giving evidence at the hearing. Uh, oh, apparently it was a big deal that there were 100 cigarette butts littered around the house. And so they're saying that the cigarette butts fueled the fire a lot more. Bollocks. But I don't understand that's that bullshit. because curtains, carpets. Yeah, yeah that's, you go that's like, horseshit. If they were all in a small pile, then maybe that could easier to light. If but they, they were, were like around the whole house. I think if, I think if there were like, there were thousands of matches, I'd be like, all right, fair enough. But not. Yeah. No, yeah. that's stupid. It seems odd. Um, giving evidence at the hearing, Ms. Unit said she first became aware of the fire. When she first became aware of the fire was when she woke up and she felt a heaviness in her chest. Well, this fire's a little bit heavy. <laughs> you know? That's your roof. <laughs> if, if anything, you'd imagine that the duvet would get lighter as it was being yeah. burnt, but yeah. apparently not. Yeah, so apparently like the smoke inhalation is the is the big thing. Giving evidence at the hearing. Yeah, the heaviness of chest. She still has nightmares about it. Hooray. Both she and Mr. Moulton disputed the findings of the emergency services. And this is where it gets weird. Because <laughs> <laughs> your house is burnt down. No, isn't no it hasn't. <laughs> your, four of your children are dead. No, they're not. <laughs> I dispute that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to sue Alabama. <laughs> So it goes into a bit more detail. Mr. Moulton claimed the fire began in the gas boiler cupboard on the landing, which was ruled out by a fire investigator. Uh, He suffered serious burns to his hands. He was asked at the hearing if he picked up a burning duvet and tried to take it to the bathroom. He said, and I quote, no, I didn't. (laughs) So, like, how did he get burns on his hands? I think they're asking him. And why is the burning duvet in the the bathroom? (laughs) 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 Um... I, you know, again, this is a professional journalism and this is in all seriousness. Mr. Moulton jumped out of his bedroom window to escape, having passed the youngest child to Miss Unit. (laughs) 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 Now, if that's that's how it sees it in my head, if I was to try and uncover what they're talking about, Uh. I'm going to assume they tried to Oh, and again, I've known what was later in the article as well. But the mother was outside. Yeah. She got trapped outside trying to get a bucket of water. Okay. Um, and so he's in the bedroom with one child, and I'm assuming the perils, he's unable to get to the next room, even though the fire was in the bedroom, so he must have moved the bed, the duvet out of the room, but whatever. Um, so he probably dropped the baby out the window for his wife, for his missus to catch, and then he jumped out. Mm. So I'm assuming it wasn't as funny as he passed his baby to his missus and he jumped out the window. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
um, he, miss, uh, he said it appeared Miss Unit had gone downstairs to get water to put out the blaze. But the flames meant she wasn't able to get back upstairs, so she fled out of a door. Okay. So I, I, I'm just assuming, the only, the, to think about this realistically, a cigarette has probably fallen onto the duvet and caused a bit of a fire. Yeah. Then the missus has woken up and been like, the duvet's on fire, I'll get some water. And he's kind of picked it up to get it out of the room because his baby's in the room. Right. And then, yeah, it's kind of escalated quickly as house fires do when he's taken it out of the room, caught on some things or whatever, put it in the bathroom and the bathroom caught fire or something. Yeah. Um, again, all seriousness in this article, a search of the charred remains revealed there had been more than 100 cigarette butts left lying around different rooms of the house. One cigarette found in a window casement had not been stubbed out. One cigarette found in a window casement had not been stubbed out. So there's a cigarette that fell down by a window and they're saying it wasn't stubbed out. So I'm assuming it was not lit, but it had some tobacco in it still and the tobacco was intact. Is that what they're saying? By the window upstairs? You think so? Well, just no, just a window. Right. had not been stubbed out. So if cigarettes ran out and they've just thrown it down. Okay. And I think they're trying to imply that's what killed these four kids. I, don't th- I think that's a bit of an escalation. Yeah. Um, further context, it emerged the couple had earlier been advised by social services against smoking inside their home. Yeah. So the interesting thing there is that this family was regularly being visited at least once by social services. More context for that, please. Yeah. Have you ever seen anything that's... Um, you felt social services needed to be called? Um, I don't think so. The closest thing I've had was I was living in a house with a mate and the next door neighbours would punish their dog by keeping it in the shed at the end of the garden yeah. and hearing the dog do that. I was a bit like, oh, that felt weird. Yeah. But I had a chat with the neighbours and it was kind of okay. But I've got, I, I, I know somebody um, who knew... Like I, I'm, I was this thing about today. They knew that their nephew's legs were broken by their sister's husband, and it was a family secret, and nobody wanted to talk about it. Christ! And I'm just like, I don't, I, I can't, I can't understand that. No, like, I, I, I think, I think I'm one of the. I think I've got the disposable gene in my genetics, right? I'm asthmatic, diabetes. In, in, in voluntary rage voluntary rage as well but like there's certain situations in society where if I slot in I'm expendable so I just like I'll, I'll kill them for you I'll just go to prison <laughs> oh, I'm in prison now <laughs> it's a lovely just a lovely day for it you know be like no you can't break a baby's legs I'm sorry even if it's through you know um, yeah. not being prepared enough and I think they were just playing with the baby until its legs broke Oh, it's like it wasn't like they don't think it was malicious, malicious as in like hammering the baby it's obviously but, a, like, you playing know, a bit the baby. too hard. A lot too hard, I'd say, yeah. if it's breaking the baby. Yeah. Don't break but, yeah, the baby. These people were being seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's broken now. <laughs> Put but, it in the yeah, shed. It's a weird one. <laughs> the, um, back to the article. There had been three smoke detectors in the house, yet the inquest heard that studies have shown children don't hear detectors. What? They just don't. <laughs> children. <laughs> Children are immune. What smoke detectors? What studies? What studies said the kids studies can't they, hear loud sounds? They set children's houses on fire. <laughs> oh, they're all being ravaged by that fire. We'll go through the charred remains afterwards and see what <laughs> happened. I think that uh, well, yeah, this one couldn't hear respond. the alarm, could you? No, I couldn't hear the alarm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my charred face is falling off. <laughs> Just like, yeah, seems a bit odd. But yeah, apparently children don't respond to alarms as much, which, you know, could very well be true. Like, uh, they deeper sleepers, probably. Mm-hmm. And they don't feel the responsibility to go and investigate where an adult would. Yeah. So there's also that, you know, mental trigger. So it can make sense. Yeah. Uh, oh, fuck that. I've South got Lego Staffordshire in the morning. It's going to get my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> Do they still exist? I think they still make films. I don't know. About the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Was, was it was it Ninja April Turtles? April was for never you? a big thing. Was it Ninja Turtles for you or was it Hero Turtles? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Yeah, Hero Turtles. I never heard of Hero yeah, Turtles. Yeah, there's two different two different versions. Exactly the same characters. It's just I, 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 I at some point it changed. And I can't remember why. No. Oh. Teenage oh, Mutant Ninja no, Turtles. Whatever it was in nineteen ninety two. 
Yeah. That's what I was watching. And then, yeah, April was this never... Why are you wearing yellow all the time? Yeah. You're not f- not be friends with a turtle. April O'Neil. I'm a is that, is that right? <laughs> yeah, I think so, yeah. Master Splinter. April O'Neil. She's reporting on massive mutant turtles ravaging the streets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just a realistic re- reimagining yeah. of the Ninja yeah. Turtles. Being blogged about doing a podcast with massive turtles. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, to, to close off... It's, uh, all right. it's the funny because they're named after Renaissance, Renaissance artists. The, like, <laughs> <laughs> they were the original hipsters. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Apart from <laughs> Splinter. It's like yeah, was it named by a rat as well? Like the rat named that was them. Splinter. That rat's really eclectic. Yeah, <laughs> he's got eclectic got rat taste. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, loves cheese and Donatello. Yeah, and Michelangelo. Aero engineering. Raphael. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who's the other one? Yeah, there were four, uh, weren't but there? But yeah, to uh, to close off the uh, four children dying in fire, uh, South Staffordshire coroner Andrew Hech. That's his. That's his actual name. I, th- I was making a joke at first. H A I G H. Heh. Hey. Andrew Heh. Hey. Yeah, that's what it'll be. Uh, I don't know. Weirdo. Said, My hope is the children died quite peacefully in their beds. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I, don't know. I mean, it's better I don't know than. How that I hope up. they died screaming and crying for their parents. But it's like. <laughs> I, I mean, like, it's a weird thing to. Why comment? Well, yeah, well, it mu- like, what happened, right? So, uh, Mr. Coroner, Mr. Hech, um, what happened to these victims? Well, they would, they, uh, smoke inhalation is what killed them. And do you have any hopes and dreams, Mr. Hey? Hmm. Oh, yeah, I, I'd certainly hope that they died peacefully uh, in their beds. Yeah. Uh, no, like, you know, loftier goals, dreams. For you. Well, you know, one day I want to coronize four massive turtles. Yeah. And their weird journalist friend. <laughs> Who was the other one? <laughs> and I'll put them in a big shredder. Yeah. Who, who was the other one? But yeah. Donatello, Raphael, Michelangelo. Leonardo. Leonardo, that was it. I was like, Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> Go. <laughs> what, like the Japanese board game? No, like van. Van. <laughs> we need a van for the journalist. <laughs> so he just, no, like, yeah, just draws, it. Just, like, he didn't like pizza, he liked soup. One was it? Well, I like how I like '90s attitudes towards character development. Well, we'll have one smart one, Donatello. <laughs> that sounds smart. Yeah. We'll have one stupid one, Michelangelo. <laughs> he loves pizza. <laughs> he's, he uses big forks as weapons. Yeah. I'm a Psy. <laughs> then you got I got a leader. Well, he's to be the blue one, right? Because blue leads. Yeah. And then what was the other one? Red, the red was Raphael, wasn't he? I think he was just he was, he was just like a token average he was, guy. Yeah, he was just nothing. <laughs> yeah. He's just like. Why can't we just be normal guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was thinking there was you know, they, they, their big enemy yeah. was like was like a sponsor of like staples or something. Shredder. He's like just <laughs> Yeah. And 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 a human and the human mind. Yeah. A brain <laughs> in a crotch. The, their nemesis was intelligence itself. <laughs> this is so stupid no one's gonna buy it. I bet you they will. <laughs> <laughs> and they drove around the, 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 the cool thing about the Shredder was he drove around in a big egg <laughs> he just rolled around in a big volleyball it's just like oh you can't beat me <laughs> they must have developed it for toys in mind they must have yeah, that's about all those so cartoons that were show. like that wasn't it like Thundercats and He-Man and like Transformers Brum. was the big one Brum <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I met Brum. Brum is a sad car from Birmingham. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, kids will You're love funded. it. Funded. Six seasons in a movie. Let's do it. <laughs> it's a sad car. Uh, yeah, you said you met him. Uh, yeah. I yeah. He lived in. Uh, Where's yeah, it? He ended up in in Borton on the Water, which is like a little town oh. in the Cotswolds, and there's like a vintage car place there. Mm. I met Thomas the Tank. I think. I didn't know he was real. Yeah, I think he was. Yeah, I think he was. Yeah, Bluebell Railway somewhere in England. Right. When I was a kid. Is that thing the only thing we've ever called a tank engine? Everything else is a train. I don't know. Did you know the reason why um, they in in World War One they were called tanks? No. 
bit of random trivia, to confuse the enemy. So they thought, like, they were bringing on board, like, boilers. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, genuinely, so that, like, if documents were, you know, found with, they're bringing in tanks, <laughs> the, the Germans would read it and not know what they were actually oh. referencing. Like, well, they're doing a lot of upgrading of their boilers. That's uh, not a Normandy. problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, these tre- their trenches are going to be warm. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of excess fuel. I wonder what for. <laughs> At least they'll have somewhere to put tanks it. Tanks for the tanks. How? These weird Westerners. <laughs> Oh, that's uh, that's me for this week. All oh, right, uh, fair enough. Yeah. Just a few for me. Um, a bear cool. cub was apprehended at the U.S. and Canada border this week after trying to cross into the U.S. without travel documents. <laughs> 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 yeah, the passport photo was the weird blurry one from Bigfoot. <laughs> the only one you could find. Is, oh, I'm a bear. I'm not Bigfoot. <laughs> that's not you it wasn't my best day but it's it is me <laughs> yeah, I'm not usually very sociable no. <laughs> don't get caught out that but I don't, I'm not a selfie bear <laughs> <laughs> yeah well this was similar to that thing where that they took that bear to that drive through and now they have to get paperwork whenever they take the bear to the Dairy Queen oh yeah so I guess it was like must have been being transported or something no I mean it was in order to require documents it try, well, that's the th- I think it, it tried to cross on its own which is fine, except it tried to break through the barrier. So, like, <laughs> I guess at that point... got you on account of vandalism. Yeah, at that point, <laughs> they have to, for some weird bureaucratic reason, treat it as though it's trying to cross the border, as opposed to it's just a fucking wild animal. <laughs> trying to eat a fence. Yeah. <laughs> it's not making a political statement. Yeah. You can cross the border <laughs> over there, but if you go through the gate, you need to give me a five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. You pay for your parking up front. I'm a bear. <laughs> yeah. Well, is you, your, um, only only you can, you know, stop parking rangers. I don't know. Is your, is your token. Leave it in your window. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, a doctor in Edinburgh. Here's your bear adaptable plug. <laughs> just like, converts American plugs to just like an angry paw. <laughs> Brings up a projection screen and they watch... I don't know, brother bear. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I don't normally do tech stuff at all, but um, I saw this projector this week that was pretty sick um, that Samsung are bringing out or something. It costs like Mm. seven grand and it's like, it's about twice the size of like a computer keyboard, like width wise, but you put it right by the wall and it projects up from wherever it is into a perfect square onto the wall that it's next to. It, it looks fucking amazing. Yeah. That's, I've had projectors in the past. I wasn't that, but this was like years ago, so it they were seemed, too loud. It seemed like it'd be inconvenient to me because like you've just got to keep the room dark so you can watch TV. Yeah, it didn't feel like it brought anything other than it was really big. Yeah. And that was kind of it. And it was like, well, the quality was really bad and there was a loud fan. They probably fixed the fan. Mm. But yeah. Why just get a bet? Just get a good TV. Yeah, <laughs> it feels like you can get it for much, much cheaper, and it's fine. It's more of a style thing where it's like you know, the, what, did that fad run out where people's beds were also television? Oh, cabinets? where it came up at the end of the bed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it was Hulk Hogan that started that shit. It's just like no, just go to bed. And and well, I I couldn't use it because I'm too tall for even my very large bed. Yeah. So like, it just feels like you're just ruining the perfectly good night's sleep I, although it would be funny i've been trying to figure out what alarm would wake me up in the morning the best yeah and i think just if a television just <laughs> <laughs> just appeared slowly bright <laughs> blinding light throughout the whole room and some crit like apocalypse now was <laughs> like, oh. oh that's right i gotta get up you should better do something oh you can be that uh what's that what's that rick and morty thing where they land on that planet and they're like oh this one's perfect and then the sun comes up and it's yeah. screaming yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah or like a video call that could be a good service like if if, if your feet open if your bed opened up to a big telly and it was a face of someone you know yeah. saying wake up that'd be quite cool <laughs> it's the future yeah I, uh, if bears can cross borders, friends can invade your personal space. Yeah. I I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I won't have a TV in the bedroom anymore. I feel like I'm living at home. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's just... It, I feel like you're living at home. Like, as in, as in you feel at, like you're a kid. At my, right? Yeah, at my folks' place where you've got yeah. one room and it does everything. Like, although, were you, were you allowed... Yeah. You, you came from a stricter house, didn't you? Were you allowed a TV in your bedroom? Uh, I put a TV in my bedroom, right, yes. Right, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. There were lots of that. No computer in your bedroom. Yeah. Well, I'm going to put my computer in my bedroom. Yeah. And then enjoy the chaos that unfolds <laughs> <laughs> yeah no my my folks yeah. didn't my folks didn't care and i turned out all right um but yeah no i didn't i can't i can't, <laughs> I, I can't have a tv in the in the bedroom now i like to reserve that that's the sanctuary like all we do here is sleep and get dressed and whatever and then you get on with your day onwards married life yeah, yeah it's just it's good. It, i think it just, i just <laughs> feel like it needs to be separate but it always used well, to be I a thing have... to have like a TV in your bedroom. Yeah, I don't have one in. I haven't had one in my bedroom here. Mm. But I think it's because I just didn't have enough TVs. I mean, I use my laptop in my bedroom, and I do watch stuff on my laptop. So that's probably the same thing, yeah. right? Of yeah. Just want to lay down in my comfortable bed and kind of vaguely watch something to chill out. Yeah. So, but yeah, feels like the TV's a bit more deliberate i guess yeah i'll sometimes go up and watch stuff on my ipad but i just don't want to put anything in there that's like watch me watch me like i don't know yeah i mean, I, I think i'm a di- i'm an addict i'm definitely an addict but i think you've definitely got the tech addict stuff right of like the yeah. what is it like the notifications and the phone addiction yeah 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 I, I, don't, got, I don't have that but i've got it to so many other things i had it weird right so i i i got off i watched the i can't remember if we went through it last week at all but i watched the social dilemma um very recently oh yeah um and it's fucking it's it's eye-opening like they have the 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 people that that designed the like the interfaces and the way they work with people are the same people that like that design casinos and like slot machines and stuff like it's it's all along Mm. that thing to kind of drag you in and get you addicted um and but i reckon that's the same with advertisers right yeah it's it's a similar it's a uh, similar psychology it's it's all it's it's the attention economy it's designed to keep you watching for as long as you possibly they possibly can so they can give you as many adverts in that time as possible like it's just that's that's how the model works and it's with it's with all of it Mm. and i i i i watched this film i was like i this is fucking stupid like the, the why what I, and i very conscious of the fact that i waste a lot of time on like just scrolling on facebook and that um yeah and so i i, I like and i had only gone back on to try and find a dog and it wasn't I, I i got sick of sick of that side of it and i was just sucked into it again so i got rid of it and mm. i noticed within seven days like my attention span and my actual kind of like i don't know like sense of like calm and whatever had restored and exceeded kind of like where it was before like within a week like my 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 ability to just sit down and concentrate to sit down and just and just be do nothing or concentrate on a singular thing had just my ability Mm. to do that just shut up within a week and i i i I think there'll be a lot there'll be a lot of people who are in that situation who don't even realize oh for sure i I just wonder what it is like I think it ties into something like the adorableness gland that people have where like some people just watch YouTube for cat videos or something mm. and then they get addicted to watching adorable things. So when they're doing something, they're like, I could also be watching this adorable thing. Yeah. And then you've got people who like want to do it for positives where they're learning. So it's like, okay, they get addicted to that learning thing. But then, yeah, you get most people who are just looking, who are just doing nothing and yeah. they just want something. And they just get tied in and, re- and invested in something, and they just get stuck there. YouTube's a weird one. It's really, for me. It's very like, strange. I spend a lot of time like watching stuff on YouTube, but I never get sucked down like the YouTube hole things that everyone's always obsessed about. Like I have my subscriptions, and every now and again I'll find something new, and I tend to just watch stuff that they put out. Like the same way you'd watch mm. TV. Like if oh this is this is on, this is out. Let's watch this, and then that's it. Like I don't tend to but get. If there was down a the recommended holes. episode of their channel that sounded interesting, you'd yeah. Give that oh a yeah. Watch, the th- like the thing is, like most of yeah. a lot of the guys, the, a lot of the people whose channels I watch, I've probably seen most of their stuff. So mm. like it's. I reckon a lot of the the novelty of life and happiness have kind of dis- dissolved or evaporated from us, right? Mm. Whereas like when I was sick, when I was eighteen, I was like, I want to watch a video of a bear fighting an eagle. So like you'd find that. <laughs> 
Yeah. And then you'd see like, oh my God, a python versus a gorilla. You're yeah. like, oh my God, this is, this is the chain. It goes into that more than that. And now we're just like, I've seen most of the internet. Yeah. Like most of what I found interesting in the internet over the last 20 years yeah. has kind of, I've sunken it in and now I'm just interested in new things more than anything. Yeah. But if there was a good TV show, I'd probably like, um, what's his name? Oh, his name's like Armando Iannucci in English. Yeah. Yeah. Writer, yeah. director. Yeah. Um, the, the a friend of, of mine recommended stuff. his sketch show. Was it the yeah, thick of it? but he did like a sketch show before. Yeah, there was like a surreal sketch show. Right, and a friend of mine recommended that to me, and I was like, "Oh, this is good." And it, it was like um, Chris Morris kind of surrealness. Yeah. So it was like um, people celebrating the tourist attraction of their local village sniper, <laughs> who would just be killing <laughs> people in the street. And from memory, I think they were either like really quite fond of him and talking about, "Oh, you know, he's, you know." We we lot we're a welcoming community. He came from quite a impoverished upbringing, so we just, you know, we just send him passes and try and keep in touch, make sure his mental health's okay. Yeah, and he's just sniping. <laughs> <laughs> so if I get something like that, I'm like, oh my god, I need to see more. Yeah. So yeah, I, I just get a little bit of a hole, but it's not like uh, yeah, it's nothing crazy. Mm. Never, I've never been in a Facebook hole in my life. No, uh, no, I just don't. Uh, yeah, I just don't. I'm too turned off by too much things. True, but I you, think that's what it is. I think you you get caught up by the same tropes though, just not in the same format. Like you, like I I think you've gotten not caught caught up's the wrong word, but like you you've definitely um, gotten into um, like I've responded to like posts about discuss have had discussions. I, on oh Facebook, no, no, I guess. no, not even Facebook related, but the same mechanisms they use. So whether it's like gambling or gaming or something, you've fallen down that that same kind of hole where you've just been yeah and it, it's it's playing on the same things it's just a different yeah a different format yeah but yeah i've never been too much i've, I've just never cared about social media I, I think it's largely just because i think um i'm too decisive when it comes to lots of things yeah you know and so with fate with social media it's like I, d I decide about an article quite quickly and then i'm done and dusted or i'm out of it mm. or something like that it means i don't have good relationships with people on social media and the podcast is social media isn't great yeah those are the consequences of it but yeah i wonder what it is about uh yeah. maybe it's, a, it's that you don't wanting to understand you, you don't feel the need to convince people of things maybe like sure. you've got that's how you've thing. got how you feel and like that's fine I, it doesn't matter how, yeah it yeah. doesn't matter how you feel i feel this way and that's i don't need to convince you of anything like like that sure, kind but of like, thing. haven't you? You've done comments that are just like, "What a bunch of cunts." Yeah, yeah. Oh no, Is I'm that trying I, to convince. No, I was saying you. I, <laughs> I totally have a need to convince yeah, yeah. people of other things. Sorry, you cut out a little bit. There. You do want to convince I, people. That's, you don't. that's the th thing. I think I do have a need to convince people of a, like a right. different point of view. Whereas I don't think you've got that. Sure, but yeah, my response to that was, but. You've had like some Facebook comments where are just like what a bunch of cunts kind of thing. Yeah, but those are few and far between. To be fair, it's like yeah, like just more venting. Yeah, of, I don't. Yeah, there's, there's no even. I'm not even going to try and convince these people because what a bunch of cunts. Kind yeah, of thing, yeah. I guess on the odd occasion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah social dilemma. Before that was. Uh, there was bears entering the country oh, yeah. at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bears, bears entering, yeah. entering, crossing the border illegally. Um, in other news, uh, a doctor in Edinburgh has yeah. come under fire for claiming that chicken nuggets make a great cure for autism. <laughs> <laughs> no evidence saying it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, but does it though? Yeah, well, it, it it not doesn't. What? <laughs> <laughs> Well, they well to be to be fair, they do have to be organic, organic chicken nuggets, oh, not organic just chicken nuggets. your well, standard run of the mill nugget. Um, <laughs> she, she suggested that Exotic autism nuggets. may be caused by the MMR jab, and that organic chicken nuggets could mm. alleviate symptoms. So she's like an anti-vaxxer, essentially, a doctor. Yeah. Well. That yeah, well, that was the whole thing. Was it was I think MMR, and then they were saying MMR is in chicken nuggets, so double MMR equals not autism, I guess. Yeah, it's like a double negative. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Cancel it out. Yeah. Um, but uh, Fair enough. yeah, nothing. Force feed them the chicken nuggets. <laughs> um, right, I'll leave that one. Uh, uh, in other news, uh, college students at university in, at a university in Bali have been permitted to pay their tuition with coconuts. 
<laughs> How many coconuts? <laughs> 25,000 coconuts. I'll be right back. Uh, the school implemented the program back in March and is accepting tuition payments in the forms of coconuts, moringa leaves, and go-to cola leaves, which are being used to produce mm. uh, products such as herbal soap. Oh, that's the end of that sentence. Such as herbal soap. Uh, students can also <laughs> resell their own products to develop their entrepreneurial skills. Um, to be fair, it sounds quite good. It's it's you know uh, it I mean? was, like they sell the coconuts. It's so. because most students who have jobs and use those jobs to pay for tuition are in like the what's it called? like the service industry, which closed mm. down entirely yeah, because, of, yeah. because of lockdown and whatever. So and but the university also produces a load of um, a load of products using these coconuts and leaves and all that stuff. So there's been like, well, mm. instead of us going to buy them from a supplier, you guys go and pick them and we'll put whatever the savings are towards your tuition fees. Like, yeah, which is fair enough. But, yeah, I mean, they did something similar with like recycling in America, right? For you hand in a certain number of cans at a the government local distribution area or something and you got money for it. Yeah, yeah. So like, it's just that with coconuts, I guess. Yeah. Natural recycling. That was a trope for... <laughs> For, for for homeless people in a lot of like TV shows and stuff for a while wasn't it they go around collecting cans and yeah. stuff best advice I've heard for homeless people is join a gym yeah Especially yeah like pure gym yeah because you got a shower locker yeah all that kind of stuff much just cheaper if you, if you're to join you're homeless much cheaper to join a gym than it is to pay a mortgage or rent or whatever so just yeah or just like to pay access to a showering facility yeah. so keep yourself clean just join a 24 place hour to, gym place to brush your yeah. teeth yeah, 24 hours. Yeah, yep. easily. It's good. Yeah. Um, and finally, uh, officials in Hokkaido City in Japan have begun tackling encroaching bears head on via the deployment of monster wolf <laughs> robots in residential areas. <laughs> Release the monster wolf robots. Yeah. Is that what you said? Yep. Monster wolf? Monster wolf robots uh, are being <laughs> used <laughs> to tackle the encroaching bears. So it's like a weird escalation competition between between areas, right? Like Japan's got the robots and then China got the werewolf robots. Yeah. <laughs> and then Japan went, well, ours are actually monster werewolf robots. <laughs> so we win, right? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> the, the monster wolf was installed in a bid to avoid friction between residents and bears. <laughs> 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 well, you know... <clears throat> Now that they're getting their admin together, these bears are coming over in droves. Yeah. You know, getting the proper paperwork and uh, the proper jobs. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> who's going to deal with that? You don't, you don't want a fa person with a face I dealing with that. I bought a house a monster in a it. nice neighbourhood and there's just a bear just <laughs> yeah. standing there all the time, loitering. There's signs up. No loitering. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to take a piss at a spec savers. Yeah. You're not meant to take a piss at a spec savers. Just go next door to the toilets, please. <laughs> this this town needs a monster wolf. <laughs> a robot one. <laughs> one for a lifetime. <laughs> uh, the initiative marks the first time uh, for the mechanical wolf to be deployed in front of general housing. Um, and since its arrival on the scene, there have been no eyewitness reports of bears. So it's working, apparently. Um <laughs> An individual connected to its installation said reassuringly, at the very least, it's effective in making residents feel at ease. Oh, I feel so much better. <laughs> so much now that there's monster, monster wolf, wolf robots roaming the streets. Yeah, this is much better. I like the idea. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I like the idea that the bears uh, already knew about these. They're like, oh god, they've and now they've got monster werewolf, monster wolf robots. I'm not dealing with this a second time. <laughs> Asking the question of, well, who's got these undercover secret monster wolf robots? Yeah, <laughs> they've experienced this before. They've seen it, but they've seen it all before. Um, at present, a total of sixty-two monster wolf robots are on use in Hokkaido, in the southern islands of Okinawa, to ward off deer and wild boars that target farming produce. Uh, we want to let the bears know human settlements aren't where you live. Um, and I mean, you can build a fence and help. That's how they've done it classically in the past. Yeah, bear fence, <laughs> big fence, just a yeah. tall one. Yeah, no, nah, we need to get drones involved. Yeah, drones with legs. Dr and yeah, pack mentalities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.